Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Okay, so in the previous classes we have uh, looked at oblique shocks and expansion waves. So oblique shocks are compression shocks, uh, they are at an angle to the flow, they turn the flow towards uh, itself, um, while expansion waves uh, are more gradual, uh, they are isentropic and they turn the flow away from itself. So if you take any particular shape um, uh, that is in a supersonic flow, uh, then uh, it can have various changes in angles. The flow may turn uh, towards the flow or away from the flow and uh, consequently you can have oblique shocks and expansion fans, um, a series of them. And uh, across the, the oblique shocks and expansion uh, fans the flow is uniform, uh, only uh, at the oblique shock or uh, across uh, through the expansion fan the flow is changing. So, this gives us a method uh, to calculate uh, the pressures that is going to uh, be uh, acting on the surfaces of uh, bodies in supersonic flow and uh, from there if you know the pressures uh, you can always calculate the forces that is the lift and uh, the pressure drag forces um, of uh, bodies. So, that is what we are uh, going to do in this uh, particular uh, uh, lecture. Uh, we will take an example, so this becomes uh, clear to um, all of you. So, um, what we are really looking is uh, how the wave patterns form uh, over bodies in uh, supersonic flow. Uh, so, if you look at this, uh, a simple example, uh, if you take a flat plate, a plate and uh, put it in a supersonic flow, so m infinity here is greater than 1 and at an angle of attack alpha and then for all the uh, streams that are coming on the lower half of this uh, flat plate, uh, this body is actually turning the flow towards uh, the flow, towards the flow. So, a shock wave forms uh, at this point and this shock would have an angle beta, while on the top surface if you look at the top surface all the uh, streamlines coming on top surface uh, they actually are turned away from the flow. So, they are turned away from the flow. So, you have an expansion fan or an expansion waves are formed here. So, pressure on the top surface P2 uh, decreases because of these expansions while the shock compresses and P4 that is in this region P4 this increases ok. So, it increases in the region 4 and uh, so if you would uh, plot uh, schematically what would be the pressures like in P4 is higher P2 is lower. So, as a consequence you will get a force uh, a force in this direction which can be decomposed into uh, the lift and uh, drag forces ok. So, the lift force is here ok, uh, the drag force much smaller of course, it comes here uh, drag force is here ok. So, the lift and uh, drag forces can be uh, put in this way. So, uh, now this is the way the flow behaves. Uh, at the flat plate. Now, uh, the flow is going parallel to the flat plate after these expansion fans and, uh, but now when it comes back at the trailing edge, uh, now at the trailing edge um, uh, the flows come back together. Now, they have different pressures, completely different pressures. It is P4 uh, uh, down here and it is uh, P2 up here. Of course, when it goes back, the, the flow goes at the end of the trailing edge, uh, they cannot have any uh, pressure difference because there is no longer a solid surface 
to sustain a pressure difference. So, pressures have to get equalized. Uh, as a consequence of that, uh, you get additional waveforms at the trailing edge. You get a shock here because pressure is lower, it has to get compressed. There is a shock that gets formed here. Hmm. Okay, so, this you get an oblique shock here. And at the bottom surface, you have uh, higher pressures uh, and the pressure has to be relieved or it has to get expanded. You get expansion fans here and you get a, a slipstream uh, as essentially a surface which uh, uh, demarcates uh, the boundary between the trailing uh, the at the trailing edge between the upper surface and lower surface. Uh, the uh, idea here is that it is not always necessary that these two velocities should be the same, but uh, the velocities need have to be parallel to each other. So, uh, if you take V 5 and V 3, um, uh, they need to be parallel. So, V 3 should be parallel to V 5 and P 3 should be equal to P 5. So, this is all the conditions that we can apply at the trailing edge. So, um, the solving uh, the trailing edge of such bodies involves uh, applying these conditions uh, that the angle uh, of the flow should remain the same and the pressure uh, should remain the same velocities can be different. So, that is why you get a shear uh, or a slip stream because we are considering an invisible flow. If you consider viscous effects, it is essentially a uh, shear layer there. Okay. So, uh, but it is an invisible flow. So, it is a slip stream, a discontinuity of uh, velocities. Also, of you can have discontinuity in uh, temperatures and densities, pressures have to be the same. So, uh, you can uh, now plot these kind of uh, wave diagrams for uh, several of these uh, kind of configurations. What is plotted here, pressure variation is at the surface. So, this is at the surface, uh, at this uh, particular surface, along the surface. Okay. So, similarly, you can plot the uh, pressure variations at the surface. Uh, for a these kind of uh, airfoils are called diamond shaped airfoils. You can see the shape is that of a uh, diamond mm, and when it is uh, facing a uh, Mach number greater than 1, this is a wedge. So, this is a wedge. So, a very small angle. So, this is symmetric about this chord line theta. So, uh, this is turning the flow towards itself. It forms oblique shocks. But uh, at this point, it turns away from the flow, so expansion waves are formed. Pressure uh, decreases at 3, so P3 is less than P2. Then again, when it comes back to the trailing edge, you need to give matching conditions for um, uh, the slip line over here. The flow is uh, parallel to these uh, uh, surfaces, so uh, now you can see that the flow has to turn into itself in order to become uh, parallel again and uh, therefore, uh, another set of shocks are formed. So, uh, th this can now this uh, angle of attack here is 0, you can consider various angles of attacks and uh, you can draw such uh, wave diagrams. This pressure variation is on the surface. Okay. So, uh, on the surface the pressure is varying uh, in this fashion. Uh, you should always understand that in supersonic flow th what we had discussed earlier in the terms of Mach waves and how uh, you have zones of silence and uh, zones of uh, influence. So, so uh, unless a Mach wave passes a particular point, pressure does not change. So, if you uh, consider a line here in uh, the free stream, the pressure here remains P 1 uh, until this particular point. Mm, that is actually well behind the leading edge. So, you can see that leading edge would have passed into the flow, but uh, the pressure will remain P 1 until it encounters the oblique shock. Only after that the pressure will change to P 2. Uh, similarly, uh, if you go right here until it meets the Mach wave pressure will remain P 2 and gradually it will decrease slowly to uh, P 3 until the last Mach wave. Once the last Mach wave 
leaves then it becomes p3 it becomes a constant again. So, uh, this one has to understand as you take different uh, sections in the flow the pressure variation will be uh, different in the flow according to how the waves move across. So, the wave nature of the flow and how the waves go uh, in a supersonic flow is important and this will come again and again as we move on in the course. So, uh, here you should understand uh, the forward uh, that is the uh, uh, front portion of these uh, kind of bodies you can always uh, solve using oblique shocks, expansion fans. But the trailing edge, at the trailing edge you should be very careful, you should apply the conditions that uh, uh, P1 uh, that is at the trailing edge uh, here the nomenclature is 4 in the region 4. So, P4 upper is equal to P4 lower, they should be the same, no. these two pressures should be the same and uh, deflection angles uh, uh, the velocities have to be parallel to each other. V4 u is parallel to the lower surface. These two are the conditions that you can apply uh, at the trailing edge. So, uh, with this let us try to solve one uh, problem. Uh, we have a, a diamond shaped uh, airfoil here and uh, uh, the angle of this uh, this is the symmetric line the angle is 10 degrees uh, for this uh, diamond and uh, it is facing a flow of Mach 3 uh, with an uh, angle of attack of 12 degrees. So, actually uh, this has to be slightly expanded at this region because uh, you have a 2 degrees of um, difference and that is not very well visible in this schematic. So, So, very small, but uh, this is slightly exaggerated. So, you can, so there is a 2 degree difference here, ok. So, uh, 2 degrees, so this is 10 degrees and uh, this is symmetric is 10 degrees and you have Mach number equal to 3.0. What we are interested in is uh, if the uh, wave structure is so, uh, it has to be like this because there is a flow turn away from uh, the flow direction here by 2 degrees. So, you have expansion fans here and this flow again turns the flow away another set of expansion fans. Mm, here you have an oblique shock, uh, but at this point flow turns away from this direction. So, an expansion fan, now they follow uh, different sets of uh, wave structures. So, here uh, you get an expansion fan at the bottom half and an oblique shock at the top half and uh, finally, the flow is turned um, again uh, to the free stream uh, direction. The idea is uh, what is P4 by uh, P01 and uh, compare P4 by P01 and P4 dash by uh, P01, what is the pressures at these two uh, sides, if the wave structure is given is uh, so. How do we solve this problem? So, you have to now uh, put in place uh, together all the uh, concepts you learnt in uh, oblique shocks and uh, expansion fans uh, together. So, we will go uh, and the good thing with uh, supersonic flows is you can go step by step from region 1 to region 2 and solve from region 2 to region 3. 3 to 4 and similarly on the bottom half because there is a specific directionality uh, involved in supersonic flows. So, let us go start from 1 and go to 2. Uh, 1 to 2 uh, region 1 to 2 is an expansion fan region. Uh, the way to solve uh, expansion fan flows is to look at the prandtl mayer angle. So, uh, the key equation here is nu 2 is nu 1 plus uh, the change in angle theta, uh, change in angle here, uh, we know theta here is 2 degrees and uh, we know nu 1 is known uh, because you know the Mach number upstream which is Mach number is 3. So, uh, nu 1 is uh, 49.757. So, as a consequence you know nu 2. 
which is uh, 51.757. So, now uh, you have to uh, get back the Mach number. Now, this, this is a uh, direct plot the uh, Randall Mayer function versus Mach number. Uh, you can look at the charts or you can use the online calculator and you can uh, get what should be the Mach number if the Prandtl Mayer angle is uh, new to uh, which is 51.757. It comes out to be um, uh, 3.105. So, uh, you see that Mach number has increased due to a flow deflection away from the flow of uh, uh, 2 degrees. Now, uh, here when you use charts and tables uh, you may be uh, off in these numbers by few uh, degrees, one or two degrees. As a consequence, the answers uh, that you get might be slightly different from uh, between uh, people. Uh, so, uh, this sort of uh, small errors is expected uh, because uh, it involves uh, sometimes interpolation, sometimes uh, reading from a graph and uh, these kind of uh, operations uh, have small errors uh, or you can use online calculators where uh, you can get accurate numbers. Even so, uh, the, there if you round off you get round off errors. So, uh, small changes in numbers are expected uh, when we do these kind of uh, numericals. Uh, so, that should be borne in mind. Okay. So, uh, what are we interested always we should go back to P 4 by P naught 1. So, what is uh, P 2 by P naught 1? Uh, this is P 2 by P naught 2 uh, multiplied by P naught 2 by P naught 1. Uh, but P naught 2 by P naught 1 is an isentropic flow there is no change in stagnation pressure. So, P naught 2 is the same as P naught 1. So, I can write this as P 2 by P naught 1 and uh, I know what is the uh, Mach number which is 3.105 and for this Mach number uh, what is P 2 by P naught 1 I can get from the charts 0 0.232. Okay. So, now uh, moving on from uh, this particular uh, uh, region we go to uh, from region uh, 2 we go to region 3 from between uh, region 2 and region 3 it is again another expansion fan. Uh, so, uh, same principle holds good nu 3 is nu 2 plus delta theta uh, change in the angle. What is the change in angle trigonometric relations uh, you if you use trigonometry this is 10 it is symmetric this is 10. So, this angle has to be 20 degrees mm, is from uh, uh, trigonometry you can find that out. Okay, so, delta theta is mm, 20 degrees. So, uh, we know what is nu 2 mm, we had just found out 51.757. So, nu 3 turns out to be 71.757 corresponding Mach number m 3 is mm, 4.49. So, now we need uh, P 3 by P 0 1 again uh, P 3 by P 0 1 is uh, 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 the stagnation pressure has not changed uh, either in region 2 or in region 3 isentropic flow. So, directly you can find P 3 by P 0 1 for 4.49 which is uh, 0 0.003498. Now, between region 3 and region 4. Now, that uh, region uh, there there is an oblique shock. So, it is an oblique shock. Now, the flow totally has deflected by 2 degrees and 20 degrees. Um, so, uh, and at uh, the end at the trailing edge the flow returns back to uh, the angle 0. Okay, so, the free stream angle. So, the flow has to turn towards itself by 22 degrees. So, uh, region 3 to 4 the flow deflection uh, is uh, theta is 22 degrees uh, towards itself. So, it forms an oblique shock Mach number is uh, 4.49. Okay. So, now uh, use uh, the m beta theta charts 
find out what should be beta and it is 33.3 degrees okay so now for, from this now what we have to do uh, we know beta so we find m n 3 is m 3 uh, sin beta and apply normal shock relations for m 3 uh, which is uh, 2.465 okay and also that uh, m you will get m n 4 from here uh, m n 4 and you get m n 4 and uh, m n 4 uh, from m n 4 you can get m 4 m 4 is m n 4 pi sin beta minus theta all of this from obli uh, from normal shock relations you will get m n 4 if you know m n 3 and uh, from here we can get m4 m4 is uh, uh, 2.63 so obviously the mac number has uh, reduced so now uh, what do we need here we need um, p4 by uh, p01 p4 by p01 this is what is required this can be um, p4 by uh, p3 multiplied by p3 by p01 p4 by 3 p3 is the uh, pressure ratio across uh, the shock which you know here mn3 you know from this you can find out what should be the pressure ratio across the shock 6.916 multiplied by p3 by p01 0 0.003498 and this turns out to be 0 0.024 Okay, so uh, bear in mind 0 0.024 okay. now we look at the lower side uh, what happens in the lower side so lower side you have started off with the shock so it is something like this nature there is a shock here and the flow uh, from the initial has deflected by 22 degrees mm, oncoming flow back number is 3.0 mm, and uh, uh, so, uh, beta for this uh, shock wave angle beta, so theta is known, beta is 40.19, so this angle is 40.19, okay. Uh, so, now we know beta, so we can find out what should be m n 1 is uh, uh, m 1 sin beta, okay. Uh, once you uh, find out m n 1 this is 1.935 all properties of the shock like p 2 um, by p 1 uh, can be found out it is uh, 4.2015 uh, by using uh, normal shock relations normal shock uh, um, charts or calculators you can find these numbers and what we need again is p 2 prime by p01 is uh, p2 prime by p1 multiplied by p1 by p01 and uh, p1 by p01 is uh, nothing but uh, for the upstream mac number m equal to 3.0 what is p1 by p01 this is known 0 0.02722 so this uh, value is uh, 0 0.1143 and what is the mach number so you go m2 prime is mn2 by sin beta minus theta 5899 by sin of uh, beta 40.19 minus 22 this is turns out to be 18889 okay so now we go from region uh, 2 prime to 3 prime on the lower side mm, here it's an expansion fan delta theta is 20 degrees you start off with uh, m2 prime of 1.889 okay and uh, here new 2 prime for this new 2 prime is uh, 23.019 degrees so um, new 3 prime then is uh, 43.019 degrees so m3 prime turns out to be uh, 2.71 
So, we can find out what is P 3 by P 0 3, your stagnation pressure is going to be constant across the expansion fan ok. And we need P 3 prime by P 0 1 which is P 3 prime by P 0 3 multiplied by P 0 2 prime by P 2 um, multiplied by P 2 by P 0 1. Uh, we have got P 2 by P 0 1 here and we know Mach number is 1.889. Uh, so, we can find out what is P 0 2 by P 2 prime that can be found out uh, P 0 2 is equal to P 0 3. So, P 3 prime by P 0 3 can be known from it is given here can do the multiplication this turns out to be um, 0 0.03184. Now, at uh, the final point between 3 prime and 4 prime it is an expansion fan. So, M 3 is 2.71 from the calculations and here the flow turns back by turns away by mm, 2 degrees. So, it turns away by 2 degrees. So, new 3 is 43.019. Uh, so, new 4 uh, is uh, 45.019 which is new 4 is new 3 plus delta theta which is 2 degree here. Uh, so, uh, M 4 is 2.77 okay. and uh, we need P 4 prime by P 0 1. Okay. Uh, this is uh, P 4 prime by P 0 4, P 0 3 dash by P 3, P 3 P 3 dash by P 0 1. So, these were calculated in the earlier steps mm, P 4 by P 0 4 uh, you know 2.77. So, for this this Mach number uh, P 4 by P 0 4 is 0 0.03857. If you do the multiplication of all these numbers, you get uh, P 4 prime by P 0 1 is 0 0.029. P 4 by P 0 1 in previous calculation was 0 0.024. They are very close to each other. Uh, we need uh, so the idea is that the pressures P 4 prime should be equal to P 4. We have of course, the round of errors uh, slightly, but uh, even considering them these are very very close to each other. Okay. So, um, it actually satisfies this uh, relation P 4 prime equal to P 4. Now, uh, if you know the pressures at each uh, surface, um, you can always calculate what is the force pressure multiplied by area is a force. So, you know pressure you have found out pressure at each surface now. And uh, from here you can calculate what is the force. So, force acting can be calculated at each surface and then they can be resolved into parallel and perpendicular components and therefore, you get a lift and a drag. So, this way of doing uh, these kind of uh, uh, sort of estimating the forces is uh, known as the shock expansion uh, method. Okay. I hope uh, this uh, elaborate example has given you an idea of how to use uh, shock waves and expansion wave uh, relations to solve certain problems. We will solve more problems down the line uh, in the next few classes.